she rolled? Sweet. What else? So I, said, I feel like this is like a little awkward because I just went last week and we made ice cream for dessert. My mom told me never to have dessert before dinner and this is like a real dinner. So, uh, <laughs> but we're going we're gonna to jump into uh, what agricultural education actually is. Uh, I talked to about a little bit last week. Uh, and we all, as we kind of found out, we all have this passion for agriculture that's come from some, uh, somewhere, whether that be our parents, whether that be growing up on the farm, whether that be uh, being in a classroom, uh, which is what we're going to talk about today. We all have this passion for agriculture, right? Uh, but what does that mean? We're going to explore one way that we build and cultivate uh, agricultural knowledge uh, in schools across America. Um, so, first off, we're going to answer three questions. First off, we're going to answer, uh, what is agriculture education? What is school-based agriculture education? Uh, a lot of us said we weren't a part of it in high school or middle school, uh, so we're going to explore a little bit about what it is, uh, discover some statistics. Uh, why is it important? Why do we need school-based agriculture education? Uh, if we have people that are interested in agriculture in this room without going through school-based agriculture education, uh, then why do we need it? We're going to explore that question. And then lastly, uh, we're going to talk about what does the future hold? What does the future hold for agriculture education? Uh, as well as what does the future hold uh, for the agriculture industry because of agricultural education? Uh, so first off, what is agricultural education? Uh, by a show of hands, who said they were in a school-based agriculture education program? Three? Four? Where were you from? Sussex. Sussex. Nice. Where are you from? Like what part? Oh, okay. Wait, well, you went to Jamesville? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so as it suggests, agricultural education is teaching students about agricultural food and natural resources. That seems uh, pretty self-explanatory, right? We're teaching about what agriculture is, the impact that it has on us every single day, where our food comes from. Um, but as we learn, um, we're teaching these through development of skills uh, in areas like math and science and technology. We're taking those practical or those uh, knowledge skills from other classrooms and applying them through agriculture education to the agriculture industry, uh, which is something that other organizations uh, and groups don't do. Uh, some key dates just to kind of understand some history about school-based agriculture education. In 1917, uh, two Georgia congressmen came together uh, and created the Smith-Hughes Act. Uh, which, which allowed for school-based agriculture education and programs uh, in all 50 states. Uh, in 1928, the Future Farmers of America was formed. How many of us have ever heard of that? Prophetic? Sick, nasty. Um, we were, a lot of us were uh, big time a part of it. Um, as we'll talk about, the FFA is a big part of agricultural education. Uh, in 1940, uh, membership in agriculture education surpassed 584,000, which was a uh, pretty big milestone, and in 1970, uh, 853,000, and then we'll see what the current number is in just a couple minutes. Uh, and then in the 1990s, uh, this is where we see a big shift from a very production-oriented, um, traditional-type agriculture to a more science-based uh, and a more distance education-type system of agriculture education, which is really important uh, in today's, uh, today's classroom. Everybody should have a model in front of them. Everybody hold that up. Play around. So this is the model of agriculture education. This is something that uh, no other organization has. It's very different, it's very unique, uh, but it's very simple at the same time. There's three components to this model, and as we talk about them, just fill them in in those little bubble bubbles. First off, we have uh, the classroom lab. I don't know why that L is up there chilling like a, I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's a space, I guess. Uh, but the classroom lab. Um, pretty self-explanatory. We all went through classes in high school. We all go through classes every day here at Virginia Tech. Um, but this is the point where we learn those skills in a classroom, a formal classroom setting. Uh, why might this be important to uh, educating people about the future of agriculture? Exactly, right? Why do we have classes here at Tech to learn, right? We're learning those skills uh, in the classroom. The second one we're going to talk about is uh, experiential learning. Uh, or in the agriculture education model, we call it SAEs, which is a Supervised Agriculture Experience Program, which students get to go out and actually create their own project, whether that be starting uh, a tree business like Daniel did as part of his SAE, uh, or whether that be welling outside, or whether that be doing whatever Caitlin does. I don't know what she does. Nothing. Um, <laughs> whatever you do outside of the classroom, that's experiential learning. When we went outside uh, to do the little like crossover the the volcano pit with a bridge, right? That's experiential learning because we're taking uh, the skills, the communication skills that we're learning in the classroom. 
we're applying them outside uh, experiential learning. And then the last part, as we said before, uh, is FFA, it's that leadership component, right? Where do we apply these skills? How do we, um, you know, recognize students that are excelling in these skills? Uh, so why might an uh, organization like FFA be important to the future of agriculture? Uh, it creates connections. Yeah, absolutely. That networking opportunity, uh, connections like you said, uh, and it's kind of an extension of that experiential learning piece as well. So, our model. Any questions about the model? Pretty simple, right? Cool deal. So, why is agricultural education important? Our second point, um, you know, we hear this, this statistic of 9 billion people by the year 2050. I think that gets kind of like old after you hear it a bajillion times. Uh, but the numbers I like to look at is by 2050, we need 3 billion, and there's going to be 3 billion more people uh, in the middle class, right? Those people are going to be eating 60% more protein, milk, eggs, meats, uh, and then we're going to have to do that with what's equivalent today, one and a half planets worth of resources, right? 3 billion people, 60% more protein, one and a half planets. That's pretty substantial. We need the educational resources and the opportunities for students to be able to enter uh, careers, to innovate, to use science, to be able to meet these challenges. Uh, I said earlier I'd come back to the, the statistics of what today's enrollment is. And today's enrollment uh, is about one million people in agricultural education programs. Uh, and I don't know what they meant, but um, in all 50... <laughs> In all 50 states, as well as uh, Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands uh, and Guam. So uh, a huge population of people that are in school-based agriculture education programs learning uh, what it takes to meet these three challenges right here in the future, as well as uh, a lot of other challenges. Um, a lot of people think, you know, they have a stereotype of, of agriculture education in rural, rural areas that don't have internet and that, you know, date their, their cousins and stuff. That's not true. We have uh, programs in 18 of the 20 largest cities. Um, some of the most impressive programs I've visited uh, were in Chicago uh, and New York City. Uh, right in the heart of New York City, people are learning about agriculture. Uh, pretty impressive. Um, the USDA and Tom Vilsack released a, um, a report back in March that said there was 22,000 jobs surplus in the agriculture industry, meaning that about 57,000 jobs open up in the ag industry every year. Uh, but there's only about 35,000 graduates to fill those jobs. 22,000 jobs that these 1 million students um, can, can fill. Oh, shoot. How do you go back, David? I don't know. We'll just do the sum of them. Um, and then lastly, uh, ag is constantly changing. Uh, there's jobs that exist today that didn't exist uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago. So we're preparing students for um, allowing them to uh, learn the critical thinking skills, the problem solving skills, to be able to answer jobs that don't, um, that don't exist today. Uh, taking a look at some examples of some pretty impressive um, agriculture education programs just to kind of give you an understanding uh, of what it's all about. Um, Waterford High School, this is a high school I visited last year, uh, last January during like the polar vortex uh, in Wisconsin, it's like negative 40 degrees. Uh, but at Waterford High School, the teacher and the students um, were working together with the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and um, the teacher worked for the university as like a subcontracted researcher and employed his students, like paid his students to do research for the university. These are like 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grades. Uh, they had also created like this um, water like filtration system that was like new and innovative. This high schooler so literally created this. Uh, you know, water filter thing that was cheap and easy to ship, whatever. Anyway, Signal Not Middle School, this is actually a school in Virginia, uh, up north in Strasburg, pretty impressive school that's doing um, some pretty awesome stuff. Um, they are just rock stars. They have a community garden that they feed, um, you know, all sorts of food banks and people. They do lots of different meal functions for veterans and such. Uh, really cool. And then Chase County, Nebraska, uh, this is a, a program that had a massive greenhouse. I wish I had the, like, the measurements of it, but they were growing hydroponic tomatoes and uh, completely supplied the food bank in their local community with tomatoes, uh, as well as a lot of other stuff. Sold them a lot too. Uh, further teaching, you know, the skills of marketing, business, finances, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so what does the future look like, uh, or what does the future hold? Um, we're preparing bright and young people. We're uh, focused on innovation STEM uh, and STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, math. I met a guy in Georgia um, who had created a way, a method of eradicating kudzu. Does anyone know what kudzu is? Yeah, it's a pretty invasive species of plant, uh, plant 
but he had multiple patents and was working with the USDA to, to get it onto the shelves. Uh, we're awarding incredible talent in the agriculture industry, bringing to light some of those opportunities, uh, and then we're continually growing uh, membership-wise uh, and interest-wise. And finally, in conclusion, um, just to kind of wrap up those three points, what is agriculture education? Uh, it's educating people about the challenges of agriculture. Um, why is it important? Because there's a growing need, as we said, uh, with those many statistics. And then lastly, um, agriculture education is helping to make uh, the future of ag bright. So thank you guys very much for the question.